This is part two of our pantry roof project. Here is an interior shot of the trusses sitting on top of the Connex or shipping container. To give you an idea of the products that we are using, we went with a product called Felt Buster. It has, uh, one side has a more plasticky or waxy feel. The other side feels more like your typical asphalt felt. We placed it on top of the roof, grid side up, and tacked it in place with grip tight round plastic cap, one and a half inch roofing nails. Both of these products are from Home Depot. I got all of this info from my awesome brother who owns a roofing company and he helped us list out all of the materials that we would need to do this the right way. Um, we'll go into more detail on the metal roofing, the steel roofing materials later. The worst part about getting the environmental barrier in place is the wind. The wind is absolutely terrible. It's pretty quick in this video, but you'll see a few times the wind turns the barrier into a sail, and at one point it blew the entire roll off the roof. I thought about diving for it, but I just had to watch it go and hope for the best. I was pretty impressed though with this synthetic felt. It's really strong and it didn't tear at all, even though it was only attached by a couple of nails on the south side of the building. But in the end, with a couple of choice words and Chad hoisting the thing back up onto the roof, we were back on track. Because the trusses are sitting on top of a somewhat convex shipping container, it's not perfectly square and we did have a little bit of overlap on the 4x8 sheathing. So Ch Chad just took a Ryobi jigsaw to two of the spots where we had a slight overlap and removed a sliver on each one so that they laid flat. Simpson Tie and a couple of other companies make products to help keep the sheathing level, but my brother, the roofer, suggested that we just let the weight of the steel roofing settle it together, and as long as the wood wasn't overlapping, we should be fine. Uh, less money, less work, both good things in my book, as long as we're not cutting corners. Did we mention the wind is the enemy of this project? This is zoomed in on about 20 feet of the felt lifting up like a giant kite with really only a little bit of wind. Wind is the main enemy here. We uh, changed our tactics a little bit for the east side of the roof to kind of combat the wind. Rather than just roll out the entire length like we did on the other side of the roof, we rolled and fastened as we went. And once the felt buster is tacked onto the OSB, it feels pretty secure to walk on. I wore hiking sho shoes and that felt pretty safe walking around. Uh, Chad, on the other hand, chose to wear running shoes and I'll just say I wouldn't recommend that. We wound up placing caps about every 12 inches along the top and the bottom of the felt and zigzagged every couple of feet in the middle. Because this is a facade and water collection roof, we weren't too terribly concerned about how precise the nail spacing was, so you might want to check the code in your area. At the end of the final run, we just cut the felt and tacked it in with a few nails, as you can see in this shot, uh, to keep the wind from blowing under it and pulling it up. Come back for part three of the roof project, where we'll hopefully finish. Click to subscribe if you'd like to see more Slick City Ditchers. Thanks for watching and happy off-gridding.